I like to note that the script for this video is split between two people. Uh, I will cover the first half of the video while Lawmaster covers the second half. I also want to thank Lawmaster for being the one who brought this video idea to my attention in the first place. In the realm of Team Fortress 2 fan games, Tetragon Fortress is by far the most obscure one. In terms of quality, it may be behind games of larger studios such as Typical Colors 2, but Tetragon Fortress still holds a history that spans over 7 years. This video will be divided into 8 chapters going from 2016 to 2024. In 2016, regular Tetragon first uploaded a game called Team Fortress 2 Versus onto Roblox. The game would later get a rename, but we will cover that later. Uh, the game was technically created in 2011, but it didn't see any actual development until 5 years later. Tetragon Fortress was never intended to be a large-scale project. In fact, it served as a way for Regular to familiarize himself with Roblox Studio. Since Regular was an inspiring game developer, Tetragon Fortress served as a, served as a template sort of, for learning game development. You can still access this first version of Tetragon Fortress by playing this archive. Here we can see that weapon models are less polished, the HUD and GUI is different, My Fort is the only map present in the rotation, and fall damage is in the game. This archive still surprisingly works despite not being updated for over 5 years. This archive still works, so a link to it will be present in the description. Mindfort itself does have a bit of an interesting history. It's based off of a custom map in TF2, and which likewise uses Minecraft textures and is also a recreation of Two Fort. The map itself actually gained a bit of popularity ever since its release in Tetragon Fortress. And since Regular was still experimenting with Roblox Studio, but the game was still going to grow in the following year. 2017 was the time where Tetragon Fortress started to gain traction on Roblox. It wasn't fully popular yet, but it was getting some attention. Regular Tetragon started to realize that the game was starting to accumulate in growth. It could actually be a long-term project. So at some point, he made the second map to ever be added in the game, PL Vulcan. PL Vulcan also holds the title for being the first ever payload map. Uh, 2017 was also the year where Regular collaborated with other builders. By the end of the year, we got maps like Warehouse, Cave, Cave Cry, and Lab alongside Desert Dream. Those are just a few examples. This is also the first year where other weapons outside of the default stock weapons were present in the in-game shop. Some of the earliest weapons to be added were the Force of Nature, the Liberty Launcher, the Tomslav, the Iron Bomber, and the Rescue Ranger. Tetron Fortress also started to gain traction on YouTube as well. A YouTuber named Justin Jammin uploaded a video about Tetron Fortress. It's mostly just mind fort gameplay, which doesn't really tend to be very entertaining, but the video managed to gain over about 6k views. Also, it got regular's attention as well. 2018. This is where the game started to really take off. At this point, the dev team grew by a considerable amount. I will put a couple of them up on the screen right now. For starters, in January uh, on the 5th, Notive made a video on the game. Footage from this video was used for a now deleted trailer that was uploaded onto Crowscript's channel. Eventually, a Roblox animator named Pretori took notice and made a King of the Hill map named Hillmine. He also did some minor animation work for the game. On January 24th, Pyrojo became the first TF2 YouTuber to make a video featuring Tetragon Fortress. From the gameplay, we can see that the view models for the game are still outdated, but there are a couple recognizable maps, ones that I mentioned in the previous segment. Oh, and the game also had a couple bugs still. Ah! I just got- what is that? Why- get away from my screen! Sometime in March, the game was renamed from Team Fortress 2 vs. to the name we are familiar with today, Tetragon Fortress. In April, the first weapon pack came out, the Picnic Basket, which included a bunch of food-related items as well as the Opera Hand as a bonus. In December, a Christmas update came. A bunch of snow was added to a lot of the maps, as well as the inclusion of the Mega Pack Series 1, which contained a bunch of weapons added throughout 2018. 
2019 is the year where Tetragon Fortress was at its peak. The game was at a point where there was a fully fledged community around it, and there was an entire development team with contributors submitting their own weapons and maps. Events are also more well documented this year since there is a changelog present in the Discord server. A couple things happened in March. Um, a new logo was made for the game and stuck around for a couple years. An official Twitter for the game was also made, but it did not go anywhere. There was only like three tweets. 2019 is where a large amount of updates happened. Updates were a bit slow for the first five months of the year, but in the summer, on May 28th, the Midsummer Night Bash weapon crate was added. July 7th rolls around and consists of an entire remodel of all the stock weapons, an inclusion of the control points game mode. July 10th comes around and random get crits get removed. On July 26th, the Mecha Pack Series 2 was added. It contained weapons added from December 2018 to July 2019. This update was also the day where the random drop system was also added. I did brush over a bunch of the changes that happened during the summer 2019, but it's mainly because I would be rambling forever if I went through every single individual update. Regular Tetragon did go on hiatus for a bit after these updates, especially because it was their senior year of college in 2019. In the community, on July 31st, the first ever competitive community for Tetragon Fortress was created and the first round was uploaded, however it has since been deleted and honestly, I don't think the competitive community for Tetragon Fortress has really gone anywhere since. The final update happened around Christmas. Power Plant replaced Desert Stream, Festivizers were added, all the maps got cover covered with snow, and a present crate was available for anyone who logged in. 2020 felt like the beginning of the end for the game, mainly because Rekka Tetragon was busy with their senior year of college, which left updates kind of stale for the next three months. And obviously, your real life studies are going to take precedence over your TF2 fan game. Also, this intro wouldn't be complete if I didn't mention the world's biggest mo mood killer, COVID-19. Being forced to stay inside because of quarantine did not exactly improve morale in the community any further. Throughout the year, Regular would occasionally update the community with occasional projects that he was working on for classes, but otherwise, the, the game was pretty dead. On May 5th, John Roblox, um, believe it or not, out of all people, covered the game on his YouTube channel. He played through the game and gave some minor criticisms. One of the most prevalent points was that the bullets should be changed to hit scan instead of being uh, fast moving projectiles. Regular did take notice of these criticisms, by the way, since over the course of May, several fixes were implemented into the game. Shields were added to the game on May 12th, and this update was very high in demand since it got an entire trailer dedicated to it. The update didn't fully integrate the Demo Knight playstyle into the game since shields were not included. The next day, a mapping contest for a recreation of CP Orange, a community map in Team Fortress 2, uh, a contest was announced for that. The grand prize was 20,000 Robux. Lucky T. Sienna and Dark Knight Hunter 21 ended up winning the grand prize in June, and their map was added to the game on August 16th. In July, Regular was still busy with a full-time job that he had to commit to, so the game was pretty radio silent for the entire year. Most of the activity happened in the Discord server where a lot of the admins were hosting community events. Anyways, back to game updates. August 16 was the final uh, update for Touchcon Fortress in that year. In fact, the game went dead for the next year until uh, September of 2021. Uh, 2021 was the final year Touchcon Fortress ever got updates. Uh, March was the only time where we got news on Riker's life. He had a job as a programmer, and understandably, more time was needed to be focused on that job rather than Tetragon Fortress. Uh, similarly to the summer 2021, most of the admins and the people still active uh, kept the community life in the Discord server. We finally got an update on September 9th of 2021. It seems small in hindsight, but if you were playing around that that time, you would know that the game had several game-breaking bugs. Luckily, the majority of the bugs got fixed with the update. At this point, I'm going to mark this as the end of Tetragon Fortress. This was the final update, and you'll see how the game's conclusion came in 2022 from Wallmaster. Anyways, this is the end of my segment. Goodbye. Due to regular not being around, fans and developers were the only people who could hold down the fort. Vince decided to pour in hours to make fun content like the extroverts.
Uh, we all know that a lot of people just want an update or some closure. So they decided to run a final hurrah for the community so that everyone would be at peace. Which the event was called One Last Job. More and more glitches would appear due to Roblox's hatred of working games. Building did nothing. A base plate appeared and more and more people just kind of gave up until a specific date. December 5th, 2022. It was a normal round, just like any other. On pool party, and I got a badge. The badge, of course, being the extreme display of narcissism. I... I didn't believe it, I didn't believe it. During the round, regular began to talk to us about making the game open source. And as the round ended, we went to Coal Town. Regular Tetragon was auto-balanced to Red Team, but I didn't even realize it. I left after regular started recording. This is why I'm announcing today that I'm making Tetragon Fortress free. Now, I know it sounds like Tetragon Fortress is already free. I'm making it not free as in beer, but free as in speech. I'm releasing the game's code today under the GNU General Public License. This means that the code is freely available for inspection, modification, and hosting. If all you do is download it and slap it into your own Roblox instance, that's awesome. You might need to tweak a few settings to get the shop and all that working. But I'd love to see mods, fixes, custom maps, and all sorts of mini Tetragon Fortresses. Of course, like anyone would do, I left the game, I took a shower, brushed my teeth, and checked my Discord notifications. And golly, there were 30 of them. They announced something big. Tetragon Fortress 2 was now in development. Regular gave them their blessing. A mod channel was made. The base play was gone. Due to the new modding scene, Sheen the Great made and released a fixed and better version of Tetragon Fortress. It fixed Cave Cry and most bugs becoming head developer of Tetragon 2. Another major player who made models for the first game made a game with more quality and consistent models, which would lead up to Tetragon 2. In a desperate attempt for myself to not go completely insane, I am doing a coat because I'm tired. And on the 25th of December, Tetragon 2 was released to the general public. Yet again, Roblox was back on their killing game spree. They had a quota, so they removed items just for fun on February 23rd, 2023. You know, we had to run a funeral and stuff. It, it, it really sucked. Regular came back, fixed the no items bug. I remember going to another lobby with regular because honestly I had no life outside of this 
Reg was told about the sentry not working, and Regular fulfilled the promise of fixing it, and... Regular Tetragon's goal is to make sure the game doesn't break, and is working on their own game, Named Peach Boy, it looked promising, it looked like Kirby with guns, which they streams on their Twitch channel. Tetragon 2 is going into beta quite soon, probably, maybe, hopefully, any week now. Anyway, I wanted to thank GT for all the help he has provided. I honestly would have dropped the project if it wasn't for him. I'll likely make more like this. Anyway, thanks for watching. See ya, Goober's Labor.